Okay, um, so I'm Stefan Miele. Uh, uh, this talk is about Cython. Who knows what Cython is? Well, actually, who does not know what Cython is? Okay, that's cool. I didn't know one. Um, that's cool. Um, so uh, this is, is kind of a, a general, like I'm going to show you a broad overview of everything kind of talk. Um, and, and so uh, if you are a Cython guru, uh, you may not learn much, but you'll certainly see a lot. Um, so uh, f to my person, uh, so I'm, I'm a Python developer and I, most of the time also a Python advocate since uh, 2002, so it's been a while. Um, and uh, I'm currently working for Scooby. Uh, who does not know what Scooby is? Okay. Yeah, a couple of people. Uh, anyone likes reading books? Okay, go to Scooby.de, take a look. Uh, we are just great. You get unlimited reading um, for Android, iOS, like any device you like. Uh, and we change the way people read books. It's really that way it is. Um, well, apart from that, I'm a freelance developer, a uh, consultant, trainer, and this kind of stuff. So I actually do um, Cython trainings. So if you're interested in, in getting a bit deeper into the matter, um, you can talk to me uh, after the talk. Um, or I'll go to that page and have a look uh, what, I'm, what else I have. Uh, then, well, there's um, a couple of other uh, open source tools I'm working on. So I'm involved in the, well, I kind of be the developer of LXML, uh, the XML toolkit for Python. Um, I've written a Lua integration for Python. Uh, both of them are actually written in Cython, and so the kind of the, the main project that I, uh, I'm, I'm working for is um, Cython, Cython compiler topic of the talk today. Um, so uh, three little parts, a uh, little intro, so we show you what Cython is, what it gives you, uh, what's cool about it. Uh, then a major part about Cython's type system, which actually involves um, a little demo, so you'll see Cython code, you'll learn uh, how it works, um, what makes it cool, why it's so, so great to, uh, to integrate with, with C code using Cython, um, why it's so cool to, to you know, write Cython code, how it all works, and so. And then in the end, a little quickie, uh, high performance features that we've added to the compiler. Um, I actually got a bit confused with the times. I thought I only had like half an hour. Uh, I actually have 45 minutes for this talk, so you'll see a longer demo. Um, so what is Cython? Cython is uh, it's an open source project. You can go to Cython.org, um, take a look at the, uh, the project, uh, talk to us. Uh, there's a mailing list for it, obviously a user's mailing list, so um, if you have any questions about it, just go to the user's mailing list. Um, it's on, uh, yeah, well, sadly, it's on, on Google um, um, uh, groups, but you'll, you'll manage anyway. Um, uh, ask your questions there, just you know, come along, we have, we're very happy to answer them. Um, well, it's an open source project, it's a Python compiler, or almost a Python compiler, meaning um, you can actually take normal, regular Python code and just throw it into the compiler and have it compiled to C. Okay? Um, it translates Python, actual Python source code, to C uh, using the CPython C API. Um, and it features static code optimization, so uh, you get a, usually get a kind of a notable uh, performance boost uh, when you do that. Uh, the third thing that Cython is, it's an extended Python language, so you can not only throw uh, Python code in there, you can also throw actual Cython code in there, which has an extended syntax, so it has additional uh, constructs, um, which allow you to uh, provide static type annotations, which uh, tell the compiler, okay, make this fast, this is important, drop into C, you'll see. And so it allows you to write uh, fast extension modules for CPython and interface Python with external native libraries, uh, usually in C or C++, but there's integration for Fortran 2, for example, and uh, well, the, the C interface can be used to talk to any native code anyway, so just anything you'll find. Um, okay, so how do you use Cython? Well, basically you write Python code or Cython code. Uh, Cython then translates it into C code. The C compiler builds 
a shared library for CPython, and you can import that module into Python. Okay, and it works in Python 2 and Python 3. Uh, actually, we had Python 3 support um, even before Python 3.0 was out, and then we re-added Python 3 support when it actually came out and didn't match the you know, old implementation anymore. And we had the same for a couple of other uh, C Python versions later, so um, it happens. Um, and keeps happening, actually. But, like, we are writing the code that you don't have to write. Okay, here's an example. Uh, so from compiling Python code, uh, this is like a stupid little Python script. It has a class doing nothing interesting. It has a function, passes the function into the class, uh, executes it in a loop, you know, like a little example. Uh, and then when you compile it, uh, you can just use the Cythonize command for it. So when you install, uh, install Cython, uh, this will come with it, actually only in the next version, so the current version doesn't install yet, I think. Um, but we we're working on releasing it. Um, so there's a Cythonize script, you can just say Cythonize minus i, so do an in-place build of this thing. It compiles it, uh, builds the shared library for you, and then you get a C file from it and the shared library, which you can just import and use. Okay? And it translates to 3,000 lines of C code. Okay, so that's a bit more than the Python code you just saw. Uh, why is that? Well, there's lots of portabilities defined in there, uh, which makes it support different C compilers, different Python versions, as I said, version 2, version 3, um, different minor versions of Python, um, lots of differences that, that came in over time. So, we have, so the compiler actually has a lot of knowledge about how C Python evolved over time and adapts your code to it. Uh, at compile time. Um, there's lots of, of well, helpful C comments in the, in the ge um, generated code uh, that mimic your code, so it shows what code you have and that makes it kind of easier to, to trace your code through the generated code in case you ever have to do that. Um, and there's definitely a lot and a lot of code that you definitely absolutely do not want to write yourself. Okay. Um, so we write C code so, so you don't have to, okay? Be thankful. Um, okay, how do you do that? Now, um, in the back of this Python script, and actually, like, whenever you want to distribute um, a, a package yourself, you'll use distutils for it, normally for packaging it up and distributing it. Um, and this is how you uh, use Cython in your distutils build. You would just say, I have extension modules, and they come from Cythonizing some source files, okay? And Cython would just pick up the source files, compile them, build an extension object, so like metadata for it, and push it into the, the distributed setup uh, function to build it all. Um, for the, the, the more complex cases where you need an explicit um, configuration of your extension um, modules, for example, you're building against specific C libraries, or um, you have some, some kind of dependencies and need to pass in uh, options or something, you can, uh, well, as before, as, you, as for any uh, C extension module that you would build in, in Python or in distutils, uh, you would normally create this um, extension object for them, which is the, the dead metadata for the build. Um, here, Cytonize does it for you. If it's more complex, you can do it yourself and just pass it into Cytonize. Okay? works the same way. Uh, that just makes Cython pick up the metadata and build your code correctly. Okay. So what you get out of it is highly portable code. Um, so Cython generates C code that compiles basically with all major C++, C++ compilers, uh, um, which means GCC normally, um, MSVC on Windows, um, but there are also people using it with the Intel compiler, for example, and it's, it's like production tested, right? Um, it works on all major platforms, Linux, Mac, Windows, um, people are using it on, on BSD, on, on really big machines, on like all sorts of platforms. And it works uh, in Python 2.4 through 3.4 currently, and we're um, keeping track of the development in 3.5, so that'll work. Um, as soon as it comes out. Um, we dropped support, though, for really old Cython, Python versions. 
So the next release that we make uh, will not support 2.4, 2.5 anymore, and like the, the old um, 3.1 version that well, no one should be using anymore anyway. Uh, but it, it still supports any, any recent, um, any somewhat recent uh, Python version, even that version. Um, so um, the Python language syntax itself normally follows Python 2.7, uh, but we support Python 3 syntax. If you want to write source code in, in for Python 3, uh, you just have to tell the compiler, uh, this is code with language level 3, so this is a compiler directive, and it'll just compile your code in Python 3 mode. Uh, so regarding language features of Python itself, uh, we compile and run um, more than 98% of the regression test seed um, that comes with CPython, uh, which means that we have like pretty much complete Python language support. Uh, we support classes, functions, closure, closures, generators, like all sorts of features that you'll uh, see in your daily life. Anything that says Python features is supported uh, by the compiler. Uh, uh, like comprehensions, any control structures, all sorts of stuff. There are only a couple of um, minor deviations that you're rather unlikely to meet in practice, which is uh, we don't have frames and functions. Does anyone know what frames are? Yeah, that's a couple of people, you see? <laughs> you don't need that. Um, so we only have them for exceptions and profiling, okay? Um, which is the cases where you may actually need them without knowing. Uh, and there are a couple of minor bugs. Uh, I can't see the URL, but um, just go to our home, home page and click on it. Um, okay, so for speed, Cython generates very efficient C code. There are lots of static and optimistic optimizations that applies to your code. Uh, it generates optimized code for the standard Python types, built-in types, um, many built-in functions also, uh, which means that the code will simply run faster because Cython understands it. Um, there's static type inference inside of functions, so uh, you don't have to declare many types, you don't have to tell it, like, this is a list, this is an integer, this is whatever. Um, it'll, it'll understand your code, uh, well, partly automatically, and you can help it a bit to, to make it understand it better. Um, okay. Uh, so a bit more about speed. There's a Python benchmark suite, uh, which contains real work pure Python codes, including Django, including a couple of, couple of template engines, actually, uh, a couple of uh, computational modules, like real Python code. And just by compiling it, you get a, a factor of uh, 1.2 to 2.4. It doesn't sound all that much compared to Python 3.4, um, but that's what you get out of the box. And you can make it a lot faster by, you know, adding a little hand tuning. Uh, how's that done? Well, static type declarations. Um, so, uh, Cython allows you to put uh, kind of type hints into your code, which tell the compiler that, you know, this is not just any arbitrary Python object. It's actually enough to represent it as a C int, and that will uh, make the compiler drop some parts of the code that use this variable into plain C instead of doing object operations on it. Um, some languages call this unboxing, so you may know it from Java, for example. Uh, you, you just, you know, the idea is drop uh, object operations into C, uh, remove overhead, that's it. Um, that's the syntax uh, which you can use in, in Cython code, so in the Cython language, but that's also a syntax for pure Python, so you can just add uh, kind of a, you know, this, this decorator here to a function, uh, to a Python function, uh, and have it either execute in in Python, well, the, the decorator will just disappear, or have it compiled in Cython, and Cython will understand the decorator. Um, and the cool thing is that you can exploit, employ this exactly where performance matters. So um, uh, it's um, where, so you can, can uh, profile your code, take a look at where the, the real bottlenecks are, uh, drop some, some type annotations in there, and make it way faster just by, by optimizing some, some bits of your code. Okay. And you would normally, uh, so for a highly computational code, you would normally expect a couple of hundred times uh, speed up. Okay, so here's the demo. Um, yep, so this is the IPython notebook, for those who don't know. Um, and um, 
So here's a, a really tiny little example. I actually make this a bit bigger. That's maybe too big. Okay, there we go. So a tiny example that just says, okay, this is C integer. Uh, I'm assigning it a value one, two, three, four, and then printing it. Okay, and you get what you expect. Unless it doesn't work, Hang on, we'll restart the kernel. And restart. Yes. Okay. Try again. Okay. Yeah, it works now. Okay. Um, so what this does is uh, you have a C integer, and your um, so Cython is automatically cre um, creating an object for you, wrapping it in a in a in a Python object, and passing it to the print function. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, another example. Uh, this here, um, you get in, in some sequence of values or an iterable of values, um, uh, then iterate over it and sum it up. Okay? Uh, here's an example you pass in range 10. That's, well, this is Python 3. So uh, range 10 gives you an iterable over 0 to 9. Uh, pass into your function and it'll add it up at the C level, meaning um, here in this iteration loop it'll uh, get the value from the iter uh, iterator, uh, unpack it into C int, and uh, sum is a C variable, C integer variable, do a C uh, addition here uh, and return it, and this uh, creates an object again um, from the C integer variable. You can take a look, and it actually works. And since I didn't just say uh, Cython here, I said this is Cython minus A code, um, it drops out a little type analysis for you and shows you, uh, okay, this was your code. Uh, this is how it made of it, and you can take a look at what it made of it, and this is the C code it generates just for the iteration. And the fun thing about it, uh, it does a couple of optimizations. So if you can read... Uh, C API code, then this is uh, checking for list, this is checking for tuple, which is kind of the, the most common two cases for iteration. I mean, like iterating over the list, that's what you do all the time, right? Um, so it, it kind of has optimistic optimizations that say, if it's a list, do it in faster code, okay? And you can see this line here is white. Uh, yellow kind of means this is Python operations taking place, and white means this is like plain C, and anything in between is, well, anything in between. Uh, and you can see this is like a plain C operation, so it just takes some, adds value, uh, signs up to some. Okay? Read the code. Uh, okay. And gets the right result. And this is all done automatically, right? So uh, you're just writing down your code as you would in Python. You're saying this is, uh, these two variables are integer variables, and that's all you have to do. That just works. Okay, um, here's another example. You get a character pointer from somewhere, so that's kind of the basic C string type. Um, you can call len on it, which internally calls string len. Um, and then print it, so that would uh, call string then, get a, a size t value back, uh, convert that to a Python object, so an integer object, and print it. And when you return the character pointer, it also knows that it, that it needs to convert it to an object, so uh, converts character pointer to a byte string. Byte string. Okay, and it works. Um, okay, encoding and decoding. Again, we have a character pointer, and we say, well, decode it uh, as UTF-8, and you get a Unicode string back. Okay? Um, it's kind of as you would expect. If it was not a character pointer but a byte string, uh, the same would just work in Python. Exactly the same way. Um, and this is a, a bit more inefficient than it needs to be because uh, C strings, so character pointer strings in C, don't have a length associated with them. They're just a pointer. And so in order to figure out how much of the string we have to convert here, we have to call string line on it. Um, and since I already know, uh, so it calls string length, and then passes, uh, passes the, the results, so the pointer and the length into the decoding function internally. Uh, and since I already know how long, long the string is here, it's like mm -hmm, seven characters, um, I can tell it. I can just slice the pointer, and that's more efficient. Okay, because there's no runtime 
uh, string length detection necessary anymore. Okay. Um, one more thing uh, here, what we got back is, so we had to do a manual decoding here. I had to tell, okay, what I want here is not the byte string that I would normally get, but decoded by UTF-8 and then you know, return the Unicode string. And you can automate that by saying, okay, what I want, um, actually want is not, is not byte strings, I want Unicode strings. Um, and the encoding for that is UTF-8, so this is, uh, again, a compiler directive that you're passing in. And um, then you just have to say return S and it'll return the uh, decoded Unicode string for you, all automatic. Okay? So this is kind of the, the comfort you get by the type system. Um, okay, here's another little example. Uh, I'm using the A2I function from the C standard library, uh, and I'm using it to parse a byte string into an integer. Okay, that's what it does. So what I do is I write a, a Python function that gets in some kind of byte string. I call A2I on that byte string, add one, return it. Okay, works. Um, so I'm passing in a byte string here. I'm calling it with byte string as argument. I'm calling it with a byte array as argument. Both works. Both calls to uh, C character pointers. Um, HOI gets the character pointer in, returns some C integer value. Uh, Cython uh, generates code that adds one. Uh, then you say return that. Um, it converts the integer value uh, to Python object, returns it. Okay. Okay. Uh, here's a C++ plus plus example. Um, I'm using the standard library, the C++, C++ standard library, the STL. Um, and I'm using two objects from it, a string and vector. Uh, and what I'm doing it uh, is I'm uh, taking a byte string here, splitting it. This is like plain Python operations, um, which gets me a list, a Python list. Assign it to a vector of strings. So that's uh, C++ code. It gets copied into a C++ vector for me. I can print uh, the vector, which uh, needs to do a translation back into Python. So that converts the C++ vector into a Python list again and prints it. I can just show you what it does. Okay, by running it. So uh, printing here gets me the, uh, the Python list of strings. And as you see, uh, it's been decoded, as I asked it to automatically decode for me. Um, and then I iterate over the vector, and whenever I, found, I find uh, this little string here, this byte string in the vector, I print it out. So um, and here you can see it's been found. And uh, the next thing I'm doing is I'm passing in a position into the function, and I'm just indexing the vector, getting the whatever uh, index value I want, returning that and I'm calling it with index one, index zero, and it tells me that at index one, it's DEH, and scrolling down, at index zero, it's ABC, as expected. Okay? So back and forth, Python, C++, back into Python, any way you like. Callbacks. Um, who's been using callbacks in Python? Okay, basic idea is um, you pass a function into some code and you want the code to call your function. Okay, at some point, whenever something happens or like for any item in list or something. That's the basic idea. Um, so if you do that in C, uh, it's a bit more verbose because, uh, well, functions in Python have state, they're, they're clo have closures. Um, uh, C does not have closures. All you have in C is pointers. Um, and so the way uh, callbacks work in C is um, you not only pass in your function, so a pointer to your C function, uh, you also pass in a pointer to some state, to some data somewhere, which is then, when the callback is called, passed into the callback so that the callback can uh, make actual use of it, like know what it has to do. Okay? Otherwise, you, you couldn't remember in what state it's, it's supposed to process something because C can, simply can't remember it. So the, the, um, the normal signature of callbacks in C is you pass in some, some void pointer which gives you a context, um, and uh, well, maybe some more data that the callback should be operating on. 
Okay, so here's a function that uses a callback. Uh, as I said, you pass in your function pointer and you pass in the context. Okay, so the void pointer that keeps the state for the callback. And then um, what I'm doing here is I'm passing in a character pointer, iterating over it, looking for the end, and whenever I find an, uh, a small or uppercase A, I call my callback. Okay, so I'm running through byte string, whenever I find an A, I call the callback and tell it here's, a byte, here's uh, what I found. Okay? And then I'm implementing this callback, uh, and I'm saying, okay, the, the context I'm getting in is actually a byte array. So what I'm passing through here is not an arbitrary void pointer, it's a pointer to an object, a Python object. Um, and then whatever character was found, I'm pending to the byte array. Okay, so I'm collecting A's, basically, that's the idea. Okay, and here's the function that calls it all. Uh, so I'm, I'm creating the byte array, uh, and then call my function that processes uh, some string. Tell it, whenever you find A's, call this append character function and the context I'm passing in is a pointer to my byte array. Okay? Then when I call it all, I pass in a byte string and let, it, uh, let the code operate on the byte string. And here it is, it found all A's. Okay? So what happened is I called, my, called this function here, it told this function, here's a callback, here's the, some byte array, um, do stuff. And the function called my callback and appended all A's it found. Okay? Okay, that's it for the general part. I have a couple of more. And a bit more time. Um, okay, here's an example. Uh, I'll just restart that kernel too. Okay. So uh, here's an example of using structs, structs in, uh, in Cython, uh, a C struct. Um, this is the way I would define a C struct in my code. I would say, so C def is kind of the, the, the keyword that tells you, okay, here's a C definition next, uh, coming next. And then I say, I'm defining a struct called point. It has two double values, X and Y, and an in value color, okay, C struct. Um, then, um, I have a function here, a Python function, that uses this, uh, this struct, and I'm creating the struct here first, and the cool thing is I can actually use object creation syntax. I can say, uh, create a point for me, uh, x is 1, y is 2, color is 123, and it'll assign the values to the right struct fields for me. Really nice syntax, I like that. I didn't implement it, but I really like it. Um, then I'm printing one of the values here, this is, should actually have parentheses. Doesn't matter because I'm writing uh, Cyclone 2 code, uh, but like, it looks better. I'm running it, and, uh, yep, so I'm creating functions, and then when I call it, um, it prints 1.0, which is double value of x, and it returns a dict for me. Now, who would ex have expected that? What I returned was the struct and it's automatically turned into a dict for me, which is kind of nice, right? I mean, it definitely helps with debugging when you can just say print this struct, and uh, it's, it's kind of the one obvious way to represent structs because they're like name, name value pairs, more or less. Okay? And this is how, how structs work in Cython. Uh, what else do I have? Uh, again, a bit more time, so I'll give you an example about Unicode processing. Uh, I'll restart that kernel too. Let's look at this, okay. Um, so, um, uh, so here's a little function that uh, iterates over well, something in Python. We're not telling you what it is, uh, but we actually, sorry, I can tell you it's a Unicode string that I'm gonna be operating on. So uh, iterating over Unicode string, enumerating it, and then for any character I find that is numeric, I, so the first character that I find is numeric, I return the position. Okay? Um, then I'm creating some, some dummy data here, uh, taking string escalators lots of times, and then putting one, two, three in there, because that's what I'm gonna be looking for. Uh, I can run the whole thing, and it's gonna tell me that like there's a position way back in the, in the, the string 
which has what I'm looking for. Okay. So um, I can yeah I can just run time it on it and see how long it takes. Kind of kind of okay. Okay, not too slow. Uh, now I'm doing the same in, in Python. Uh, and what I'm actually doing here is I'm using uh, Python syntax. So I'm not using uh, Python CDF something syntax. I'm actually changing my Python code to stay Python code. Uh, I'm just telling Python, you know, when you compile this code, here's some type information that you can exploit to make it faster. Okay? So what I change is uh, I'm importing the magic Cython module, which is kind of a, a dummy module when you use it in Python, but like Cython understands it and goes, I know what that module does. And it has a, um, a function in it called locals, which allows me to find, define uh, types for local variables. Um, and here I'm saying uh, s, so the argument I'm passing in is actually a stir, so this is Python 3, so this is a Unicode string. Um, and I'm saying that uh, here is some weird little uh, integer uh, type, which uh, Python uses internally to uh, represent a Unicode character. So this PyUC's four thingy is there to, you know, you can put any Unicode character in there. It's an integer type that represents the, integer, uh, the, the Unicode string, the Unicode character, sorry. Uh, and the rest of the, uh, the, the code is actually unchanged. Um, as before, um, and so when I run this through the compiler, uh, it tells me, okay, I generated this code for it, and it tells me that, well, this is, is using some, some speedy uh, C API call to find out if the character is numeric. Um, this does a bit more. Um, and the main thing it does is, yeah, it doesn't do really much. It mainly checks if S, maybe none, um, before it iterates, because none doesn't iterate. Um, and then for returning i, it has to uh, convert it into a Python object again, okay? And the rest actually runs in C. Um, so here's a comparison. Time it on both, which apparently runs for a while. Yep, and it's a tad faster, okay? So the, well, I mean, the, the major difference is it's um, the, the Python implementation runs in plain C, and the other one runs in, uh, runs in plain Python. So um, the difference here is not entirely unexpected. Okay, I mean, this is milliseconds, this is microseconds. Um, yeah, factors. Okay, um, that's pretty much what I wanted to show you as demo. Uh, now, quickly about yeah, the high performance features that we added to Python. Um, so uh, yeah, part three. <laughs> Uh, so there's a couple of features that um, people use when they're doing large data processing, when they're doing uh, processing with NumPy data, for example, NumPy arrays, um, usually. Uh, then what they want is a way to, to unpack these objects, these NumPy array objects, uh, into something that they can process efficiently at a native level. Okay, so they want to basically iterate over the the uh, arrays and do processing on them. Okay, that's the, usually the, the main idea what people want. Um, and we have added a, a simple syntax for it, uh, which looks a lot like what you would do in NumPy, uh, like the, the normal NumPy slicing syntax. Uh, and this is a syntax for unboxing low level data that is kind of any, let's say, n dimensional. Okay, that includes one dimensional bytes objects but also NumPy arrays, uh, Fortran buffers, C buffers. Uh, image processing is done that way. Uh, lots of applications to that. And all you have to do is you have to say, uh, okay, this variable here, this argument I'm getting in, is actually a two-dimensional buffer, so two columns here, two arguments, uh, of type double. And that's it. Then you can iterate over it. You can just say, okay, this is the size in, in one direction, this is the size in the other direction, have a nested loop over it. And all I'm doing here is adding one to each item in the array. Okay? And this turns into C code. So um, uh, a nice second feature of this mem these memory views here is that they support efficient slicing. So without changing this code, you can just say, okay, I don't want to run the code over the whole array. 
I'm only interested in all even lines, so every second line, and you just slice it, pass it in, done. Exactly as efficient, it just recalculates the buffer layout in memory and runs the same algorithm over it. Okay? Fuse types, next big topic. Um, it allows you to have one implementation with many specializations. Uh, that's also very common in, in numerics, that you want to write an algorithm once, uh, but have it run efficiently on lots of different uh, integer types, uh, floating point types, like item types and arrays. Okay? Um, and you really just want to implement it once because you, it's hard enough to get it right once uh, and you don't want to copy code over. Um, so what we've uh, added for that is uh, what we call fuse types. It's kind of compile time generics. Um, and the way it works is you say, I'm defining a type, a fuse type, which I call floating, and it's made up by two different types, two different C types. One is called float and the other one is double, so it's a 32-bit float and a 64-bit float. And then you use it in your code. And Cython will just understand it and will say, okay, so I'm getting the buffer in here, but it's actually a fused type buffer, and so it'll split up your code and generate two versions from it, one that's optimized for 32-bit 30 uh, 32 float and one that's optimized for 64-bit float. Okay, you get that all automatic. We have um, a couple of predefined types, which is all floating point types, all integral types, uh, all numeric types, but people use it with, uh, I've seen code that uses huge lists of different types for, um, for, for fuse types here, and just, you know, writes an algorithm and it, it expands into like 30 different versions of the code. Um, well, if they need it, uh, it didn't so far. Um, okay. Uh, next bit, um, as I said, this is like a really quickie, uh, run over everything. Uh, OpenMP, so parallel code. Um, that's another thing that people love in numerics. They want to parallelize their code because like, they have huge amounts of data. Um, uh, and they want to use as many cores as they have, right? Or more. Um, they always want to use more cores than they have, but they, they can't. Um, so uh, there's a way to, to have thread parallel loops and also thread parallel sections. Uh, so uh, this is not only usable for numerics, it's usable for like any thread parallelization in your code. Um, and all you really have to do uh, is you replace um, the four i in range in your loop for, by uh, four i in p range. So that's a special Cython parallel module that gives you this. And then your code runs in parallel. That's it. Um, what you should not forget is to free the gill so that you get actual uh, thread parallel code. But again, that's all you need to do. So p range, free the gill, and then you have uh, C code that runs in parallel on your machine. Okay? So, um, I'm pretty much through. Uh, for conclusion, uh, so Cython is a tool for translating Python code to efficiency, and it allows you to easily interface with native code. I mean, you've seen that, like, calling A2I is just like, you import it, you're done, right? Um, uh, you use it to, to speed up existing Python modules, so you can concentrate on the optimizations, you don't have to rewrite everything in C or Fortran or whatever. Um, you can just, you know, drop it into Cython, uh, optimize it a little, see that it works fast, and that's what you get without major changes in your code. Um, you can write C extensions for C Python in Python, in actual Python code, so you don't need to swap languages. And you, write, you can write, uh, you can wrap C libraries in Python by just, you know, calling C functions right out of your code. Um, and, uh, implement a nice wrapper for it in Python code. So you can write a class that, you know, calls C code and it's the interface that you get. Okay, so you can really concentrate on the, on, on writing an efficient mapping for uh, the C code to Python code. So give it a nice API and you don't have to care about you know, too many details about low level stuff. Okay, and Cython gets you all the way from Python to C. Um, and uh, what I really like about it is that you can use it as a Pareto language. Uh, does everyone know what the Pareto, uh, Pareto um, principle is, the 80-20 principle? Yeah? So that's uh, exactly the, the, the type of language it is. Um, it says, like, you get 80% of the benefit with 20% of the effort. Um, and 
Cyclone really allows you to like find the right 20%, do some stuff there, and you get a huge speed up. Okay? So it's dynamic and simple way, it will stay dynamic and simple way you can in your code and just go static and low level where you must. So uh, yeah, so Cyclone supports fast code writing just as well as writing fast code. Okay? Thanks. Thank you, Stefan, for this very nice talk. We have five minutes for questions. There's a microphone next to the camera. Please come to the front. Uh, okay, uh, can you hear me? Uh, how difficult would it be to uh, include external C or C++ libraries, not just the standard library, for example, Boost okay. or something else? Oh, yeah, Boost? Uh, yeah. Um, Boost is heavily template-driven, so um, it's not entirely fun to do it, but like, Cyclone has template support, so you can declare a class and say, this is a templated class. And, um, uh, I don't think I have an example here. Uh, but you can, you can uh, there's, so we have documentation on the page that tells you a couple of examples how to declare your code. Basically what you do is you say um, cdiff extern, so this is an external declaration from some header file, you define the header file, and then you just uh, copy the, the um, definitions. You say this is a class and this, um, these methods are in there, this is a C++ class with these uh, C++ methods. Um, uh, like add a, a marker that's templated and uh, um, and that's also what, what uh, I did here for the, the A2I example. Um, so the A2I example just works because um, we are shipping the declarations for the standard li for the standard C library. We are also shipping the declarations for the uh, C plus uh, STL uh, containers. Um, so you can just use those right away. Uh, if you have your own stuff, um, you can declare them. It's totally not much work. You mostly just copy stuff from your header file, declare it in the way Python wants it. And then you can just say uh, import stuff, use it. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, regarding generics and uh, fusing the types, mm -hmm. uh, is it possible to use uh, templates for C++? Sorry, for, uh, so this is a template uh, instead of defining your, your fuse types in Cyclone? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a different mechanism. Um, I don't think so, because uh, so Cyclone has to understand these types somehow, and templates don't really have a type. Yeah, so, like all types. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so uh, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's a different mechanism. It kind of, you can use it for the same thing, uh, but it's, this works at the generous or code generator level, and the other one would work in the C++ compiler level. Okay, thank you. Hi, um, we're using Sison uh, extensively in our machine learning library, and um, but uh, one uh, problem we have is we we lose uh, all the support for the static code checking. For example, uh, using PyLint uh, yeah. on Sison files isn't possible. Yeah. We can use the, the decorators with uh, the locals, for example, Sison dot locals, but yeah. for CDEF classes or something else, there's nothing similar or? Uh, that also works, yeah. So um, we have a syntax, uh, you can look it up in the documentation. So there's uh, a lot of the, so actually most of the Cython syntax is available at the Python level, but only the things that are, uh, that can actually be used from Python or sensibly used from Python. So what you can't do is talk to C code because there's no representation for talking to C code from Python in the way Cyton would allow it to do. So there's no, no real mapping. So you, um, if you use a plain Python uh, syntax for your Cyton code, um, uh, then you just can't talk to C code. But that's about it. I mean, everything else, all other language features are available in pure Python mode as well. OK, any more questions? One more. Last one. Uh, hello. Um, 
first, thank you for, for the talk. Uh, second, um, I, I use Cyton in the past and I had a trouble between moving from Linux to Windows because simply the compilers were different. I mean, it was simply because one compiler was ignoring something like chat, uh, Cyton generated, which was senseless, but the compiler ignored it. And so I was just wondering if you have some kind of uh, test suite to, to be sure that code emitted by Cyton uh, works on this precise compiler you have on this machine, so we can have something like uh, a limited warranty that it will work. Um, so, uh, as far as I understand, the question was about testing. Like, do we? How yeah, do we assure in fact, that? In, in fact, the C generated yeah. was. Uh, uh, not quite incorrect, but in the gray area. And so uh, MSVC was saying this is illegal, yeah, which was one, one correct position, and GCCU yeah. was saying something else, was saying, okay, I ignore it, it's senseless. So and, the, most uh, of the, the development uh, of Cython itself uh, runs on um, either Mac or Linux. Mm -hmm. So all developers are ba basically, like no developer is working on Windows. So that's a call um, for help. <laughs> uh, that is a call for help, so if you have any Windows-based developers here, which is kind of rare on a Python conference, but it happens. Like, I mean, there are really people doing development, serious development work on Windows. Um, and, and so, uh, yeah, we can always use help there. Uh, but as I said, so the, the main development work, so the core development work is happening on Windows and Mac. Uh, so we have uh, GCC and CLang in the loop, uh, mm -hmm. but we do not have um, MSVC in the normal development loop. Uh, we just kind of test it after the fact, so the people run it through their uh, com uh, MSVC compilers, uh, test our test suite on, mm. on their machines, uh, tell us if it works, and usually it doesn't work before release, so we fix it, and then when it goes out as a release, it usually works. There, there, I don't know, it's just an idea, but maybe when we install Cyton, maybe we could have the option of running a, a test suite to be sure that the, the machine does work as, because maybe uh, not so many people are Windows developers, but maybe they use site on, on Windows and yeah. test it and just to be sure I have these settings and does it work like. Uh, you can run the, the normal test suite, it's, it's part of the uh, source distribution. Okay, thank you. Okay, then we are at the end. Thank you very much again. And <laughs>